search has been about 10 blue links for the last like 20 years. And 10 blue links was always a hack. At the end of the day, people just wanted an answer. So what perplexity does is a paradigm shift in search. It's moving search from links to answers. One of the biggest questions since ChatGPT exploded onto the scene has been the future of Google Search. Will Search be rebuilt from the ground up by upstarts like Perplexity, which, as you said, just announced a $70 million plus Series B round to do just that. Now, it's cap table. It is a who's who of tech moguls, prominent VCs, and existing Gen AI leaders like NVIDIA. Perplexity AI is taking on Google, which is valued at $520 million. They raised 73.6 million from multiple investors, namely people from GitHub, Shopify, Nvidia, and other places. Jeff Bezos as Jeff well. Jeff Bezos as well as uh, part of the investors. I call it a Google search on steroid. We know that in the search business, you need to make ads to make money, but they don't want to do any ad. How are you going to make the money? If they can even survive the next two years, it's going to be investors losing their money. This week, we heard a news from another AI investment. The company is called Perplexity AI, which is valued at 520 million. They raised 73.6 million from multiple investors, namely people from GitHub, Shopify, Nvidia, and other places. Jeff Bezos as well. Jeff Bezos as well as uh, part yeah. of the investors. Perplexity AI is taking on Google in the search business. And the way they started is basically being a wrapper for ChatGPT or GPT 3.5 Turbo, the, the model GPT 3.5. And basically they were using Bing as a search engine as well. And they just wrote a web uh, UI app and a mobile app on top of that. Mm -hmm. So basically you put in a search term he uses Bing to get the search term, try to find the best source, summarize it for you, and also gives you uh, references, the different website that he has found on the internet, and give you that as a result. Is a better Google, if we, we want to call it that. But yeah, what do you think of uh, the news and everything else? Yeah, what I would say is this is, this is stupid. <laughs> this is crazy, <laughs> uh, mainly because of the valuation. What's happening in the AI world, man? All these AI businesses are just valued at like crazy money. This is yeah, 120 I... plus million dollars of valuation. But the company has only single digits revenue, meaning the revenue is lower than 10 million. Doesn't make any money. Means they see like a very, very big future for this company. And I think this is, this is crazy. I think the business model is is not great for me. I'll dive into that a little bit later. But regarding the product itself, just explaining, you know, what it does, as you say, it is just a Google, a better Google search. I call it a Google search on steroid. And yeah. this steroid basically is just the AI. And we don't know how strong that steroid is. So if it's very, very strong, the product is going to be very, very good. But yeah, it just helps with your research, does the research a little bit better by being more accurate. You can make it, you know, very tailored as well to you and things. That, that's it about this product really. And I think when you hear that, right, your first question will be, why not to just use Google, like Google search, right? That's what everybody uses. Yeah, I can answer that question for you. There was a post on Twitter as about this, actually, mm -hmm. where someone has a screenshot of Google and another screenshot of uh, Perplexity AI. And the difference was that Google has like a lot of ads. You have to go through all the links one by one to find exactly what you want. There is a small quote at the top, but it's not as accurate, relevant to what you're searching. Sometimes... Not all the time, of course. Sometimes Google is very good at doing this. That's the difference. When you compare that to perplexity, there is no ads. The UI is very minimal. You don't have to seep through thousands of results. What you are is going to give you a good summary, your search, basically, the search result. It's going to compare every source that it already has and find the best and summarize that for you. That's the difference. Your Google search might take you, perplexity search might take you, you know, a few seconds, minute less than your Google search. Cool. I mean, what I found as well is quite similar. So I'm not going to try to kind of recap what you said. My next question is going to be, why don't you just use a chat GPT? Basically mm -hmm. chat GPT gives you quite a little bit long answer, but right. it's better than Google. 
It gives you links sometimes. We know it's not perfect, but why don't you use ChatGPT? Because this whole thing is built on ChatGPT, I believe. I actually agree with you on this first. I'm going to make a point that resembles something I said before about the uh, rabbit R1 being an app. Perplexity AI can be a GPT. Yeah, <laughs> completely. Perplexity, I can literally go to ChatGPT today and write Perplexity AI in a GPT. And it's going to act work even maybe better than Perplexity AI. I'm sorry, but that's what it is. If you want to boil it down to the very, very bare bone of it. That's my point. I think we agree on this, but there is another side to this. The cost, there is a cost implication here. And we've discussed this in past podcasts. Right now, low availability of GPUs, the cost for inferring GPT-4, like generating answers using GPT-4 is still very high. What Perplexity has done is that it has used GPT 3.5, fine-tuned it. Today, GPT 3.5 is very cheap compared to GPT 4. So it has fine-tuned GPT 3.5 to do and to get similar results as GPT 4 at a lower cost. That's where the play is right now for them. But <laughs> is it worth it? I don't know. Yeah, for me, right. I think this whole thing is about the business model. I don't like it because of, you know, few reasons. This thing is very, very much relying on uh, ChatGPT, as we said. If something happened to ChatGPT, this thing is, is gone. I want to add something <laughs> before you go too far. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> so, yes, you're right. Currently, it relies their default model is the fine-tuned version of GPT 3.5. But they are working and they actually have other trained model based on open source models from Mistral, which I told you, the French company, they have a 7 billion uh, parameter model, which is called Mistral 7B. And they also have another version. So they use Mistral 7B as base model to fine-tune another model called, I think they call it perplexity, 7B online. And there is another model called the Llama 2, which is from Meta Research AI segment. And that model has 70 billion parameter. So it's okay. called the Llama 7 billion B. They have fine-tuned that model, their own data. They are also releasing that model as open source and they are calling it Perplexity 7B online or something like that. They are trying to move away from ChatGPT or GPT 3.5 from OpenAI. They are moving away from, they are trying to move away from that. Right now, they are not getting as good result from what I can I read online, but they are working hard to do that. I understand what you said. I'm going to make two other points, right? So the first one is about them having no ads. We know that in the Google search business, in the search business, you need to make ads to make money. That's how right. Google makes their money in on Google search. That's where I would say 90 something percent of the money comes from. But they don't want to do any ad. How are you going to make the money? I believe they are charging $20 a month right now. Exactly. So <laughs> $20 a month that they are charging, that's for their pro version, yes. right? And that pro version gives you the access to ChatGPT4, which is exactly the price that ChatGPT4 charges to us, right? Right. So where are you going to make your money? I guess it's a long-term game that they're trying to play here because we've already predicted this and, and I believe it's going to come to fruition. The more hardware GPUs come online, the cheaper it's going to be to use these LLMs. So the fact that they are betting on open source models, once more GPUs on, come online and inference price goes down, then they are going to succeed in capturing a good chunk of the market to pay them that $20, then it will make sense. Right now, it does not make sense. It doesn't make sense now. And so if they can even survive the next two years, it's going to be investors losing their money. Exactly. And for me, to be honest with you, what I feel is that this company is like, um, do you know when people feel like one of the giants of the industry is having some troubles and they just gang up on him? I think people are just <laughs> ganging up on, on Google right now. They That's feel so that <laughs> there is the antitrust case there where, you know, the U.S. basically saying, Google, you've paid Apple and other companies to use your browser, the Google search as a default. And we think that's unfair. And yep. because of that, you've got 90%, more than 90% market share in this. 
Google is in a bad situation, right? And beside that, there is the whole AI thing where the shareholders are putting a lot of pressure on the company to kind of compete in the AI sphere and, you know, compete with Microsoft and et cetera. And Jeff Bezos and some other haters just put their money, put a little bit of money onto, you know, another guy that used to work at Google right. and used to work at OpenAI to come up with something to kind of, you know, make the, the pain more, make them feel more painful, really. Because I don't really see how this thing is going to work, man. That's just my opinion. And it's business, right? <laughs> Imagine you capture 10% of uh, the search market. That's a sizable market. That's that. Yeah, that's a big one. That's a sizable market. Like since open, at least in the last three months, I can actually count the number of time I've used Google before um, I couldn't. It also depends on your work though. I think we are very much used to using Google to the point that it's like a habit to use Google. Right. That's it's a I reflex. Said, <laughs> exactly. That's why I said before the last three months, I couldn't remember how many times I use it because I use it so much. Mm. I couldn't count it. But now the, in the last three months, maybe I've used it maybe a hundred or 200 times. Like I can actually remember every time I've used it. Now I'm building a new habit is going to GPT-4 first before <laughs> going to Google. Me, I start on Google and then get my answer after five minutes. And then I remember that, oh, I have a subscription for chat GPT. <laughs> <laughs> And then I'll be like, damn, I got the answer already. I just wasted my time, bro. <laughs> I mean, Google is so much ingrained into our lives. So it's, it's very... Even today, I had to do some research, right? I didn't go to ChatGPT. I use Google for everything. Right. We are so used to it. Even, I don't know, even if you are wasting a little bit of time. And coming back to this uh, perplexity AI again, how is it different from Bing, the copilot right. that Microsoft exactly. released? It's the same thing. It's, it's the same thing. Yeah. Search with a chatbot. And that's what they are selling. I'm sorry, guys, at perplexity, man. Don't know how you are doing this and how you get those $74 million, uh, you know, of investment, bro. I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of investors. Obviously, there is a hype around AI, right? And uh, all AI companies are overvalued. If you're doing NFT before, you can just put NFT AI and you'll get more money, right? So there is craziness going on. I believe that... Investors are thinking, man, like if we can just capture 10% of the search market, it's going to be so good for us. Let's try it. Like even if we lose money, if we can just disrupt this Google business a little <laughs> bit, you know, and capture just part of the market is going to be great. The, Microsoft is doing the same thing yeah. because Google is a giant business. Yeah, Google is a giant. But imagine, right, the trial goes against Google. And uh, let's say, for example, they find them guilty, I don't know, bribing Apple or whatever. And because of this, you know, Apple can't use them as default. That's like a huge blow. And that will change, you know, the market completely. I mean, I'm just hypothesizing. You know, like, this is like hypothesis, crazy yeah. hypothesis. It's just very hard for me to be, think that that is a possibility because yeah. app, both Apple and Google, Apple it makes like a billion dollars from having Google, you know, as a web browser in their okay. phone. Like it's a lot of money. Mm. They are going to fight tooth and nail to not have that happen. <laughs> so yeah. that's one thing. On the other side, yeah, it's not looking for good for Google because they already lost the battle with the Google App Store mm. uh, when it comes to the makers of Fortnite. It's not really looking good for them. But even in that case, let's say they even lose that battle, right? They lose that uh, that court case. Man, Google, to disrupt Google, Google has been in this business for 10 years, more than 10 years. Like people have built this habit <laughs> for so long. Yeah. You said it like, Picture it's like this. second nature at this point. Picture right? this. We don't have a name for the market. The name exactly. of the market is the name of the company. Exactly. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> The moat is strong. It's going to be very difficult for them to disrupt it, but it's not going to prevent people from trying. It's not going to prevent in investors from trying to disrupt their business. I personally hate ads. Like, to be honest with you, this is why I pay $20 for Type GPT-4. I hate <laughs> ads. <laughs> I can keep my $20 and see some ads. And that, that's fine for me. <laughs> I think we don't have the, the, the same tolerance for ads. Right? So, but yeah, I mean, to kind of wrap it up, right, for perplexity, I think it's a good product, but it is already out there. That's what I would say. Like, yeah. is I would say it's quite, it looks like a copycat of 
Bing with the co-pilot yeah. and ChatGPT 3.5 and 4 that is based on, the whole thing is just confusing for me, really. I don't really see their value at this stage. You're right. I think we are sharing the same opinion on this. I also don't see the value add as much. The only thing they are adding here as a UI developer myself is the UI. <laughs> it's, it's like the UI is straightforward. You don't like, you don't have to go and wonder what you have to do. And when you do the search, it comes right up. It's not just a blob of text. UI is present in a nice way. But man, 578 million for a piece of UI is, man, you are really overpaying at this point. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Thank you for listening. We hope you've enjoyed the content. Don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe. Me and my buddy, we make it all of this money. Yeah, I know it's rude to be bragging. They never catching a slacking. Me and my buddy, we working hard for this money.